Hi guys! So, I've been thinking a lot recently about building a guitar playing robot, which I want to call Professor Plucky and demand that everybody pronounce it with a rising intonation at the end. And so I started making a kind of prototype guitar plucking mechanism, which you can see over here. And I'll show you that more in a minute. But I want to start by pointing out that it's actually not that difficult to make a mechanism that plucks the guitar strings. All you need is a little motor, and if you mount a guitar pick on it, then you can kind of very subtly move the pick back and forth over the string, and you can pluck uh, that way. And so what I'm showing you here is a bass guitar robot built by James McVeigh that uses this approach. And this actually works quite well. It's a very nice design. It's very simple. I think it might be based on our previous design by Eric Singer. So the only drawback about this method is that when musicians play together, they move their bodies. And that movement is important. Musicians use movement and gesture to communicate with one another when they play. Guitarists watch each other's hands to figure out what chords are being played. Musicians watch each other's bodily movement to be able to synchronize with one another. And it's fun, it's enjoyable to move together with people in synchrony when you play music together. And so when you put a guitar pick on a motor like this, the problem is that the movement is kind of invisible, so you lose a whole layer of interaction. And so what I wanted to do is build a robot that moves in interesting ways so that I can start studying how the movement of the robot affects how people interact with it. Of course, that's a big question and it'll probably take several years to start getting any meaningful insight into that. But I wanted to start by building this plucking mechanism, and I wanted to design it to have some interesting movement, even if that means kind of degrading the mechanics of it. And so I was influenced first by this beautiful Anna music video where they have this computer animation of this guitar robot thing that really moves in these beautiful and interesting ways. And then I was also influenced by this video by Disney where they design these mechanical characters that move in these interesting ways. And so I started looking at these four bar linkage mechanisms, which basically just have four rigid bars connected to one another. And so you spin one of the bars with a motor and then the end point of one of the other bars moves in very kind of weird and surprising and, and beautiful ways. So I started laser cutting some of these like prototype four bar linkages that behave in the way that I just described. And in fact, I ended up with a whole box of these, most of which ended up broken in some way or another. But here's one that I at least was able to gear up so that I could drive it with a motor. And I managed to get a guitar pick onto this one. And then this one, I changed the aesthetics a little bit. And here I'm also running the motor in the opposite direction. So the movement looks a little bit different. And then this is the prototype that I eventually ended up with, which I think works pretty well. And here I finally got it mounted to my guitar so I can actually make some sound with it. And so it's easy to just spin the motor, uh, but the problem, these little motors that I'm using don't have any positional feedback, so you don't really know where the string is as the motor is spinning. Um, but it turns out that when the guitar pick comes down and is in contact with the string, the motor stalls out a little bit, which means that it starts drawing more current. And so by monitoring the current usage of the motor, I can figure out where the string is. So basically I do a calibration routine where I just spin the motor for a few seconds to figure out what the average current usage is. And then whenever the current usage goes one or two standard deviations above the average, then I know that the guitar pick must be just in contact with the string. And so that allows me to stop the motor as soon as the string has been plucked. So 
I built six of these, although here I only actually had three motors, so three of them aren't really doing anything. But so first you'll see the calibration routine and then you'll see it plucking a kind of pattern. And then here is the same thing, but I'm running the motors in reverse so that the kind of plucking gesture looks a little bit different visually. Okay, so a couple of weeks have elapsed since that last clip, and I finally got all six of my motors in. So I'll just show you that here. So yeah, I finally got all six of these fingers wired up, and those are the little blue motors on there. So um, it looks fantastic, and so this is what it sounds like. So overall, I'm very happy with the way the movement looks. Of course, the timing is garbage, so I need to work on that. And the motors are quite loud. Um, they sound good when I record through the direct out of my guitar, but in person they're you know, almost louder than the actual guitar. So of course there are still some things to work on here, but I think that's a pretty decent prototype. And I think maybe the next step is to have some people other than me play guitar with it and see what they think about it. But yeah, so I think that's all for now, and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>